Welcome back, everyone, to Group B, second game, Garo versus Freaky. I'm Cypher, and I'm here with my teammate, Thoida. Yeah. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. So, are you excited for this? Yeah, very excited. Very excited. We know this match goes up to the winner's bracket, face our other teammate, Vortex. That's, that's right, that's right. And already we see two interesting lineups, in my opinion. Gara, one of the few people in tournament who has brought a Shaman, along with Paladin and Warrior. And Freaky's brought Rogue, which is also an underplayed class, along with Warlock and Druid. So yeah. And they, and Gara banned Freaky's Paladin, yeah. and Freaky banned Gara's Hunter. Yeah, very, very interesting lineup. Yeah. Let's get into so the uh, game. So the game is starting now. So let's see how they open. Okay, they see a warrior against a warlock. We have. Uh, do we have any idea what sort of? Oh, now we see what sort of uh, warlock it is. Yeah. And this looks like we see a slam, but we see a shield slam. So it probably is the control variant of warrior. We've seen kind of a 50-50 split between the control and the patrons at this tournament. Yeah, but like, like I think like uh, the control warrior should be the better choice of this tournament. Like and definitely in this matchup, yeah. handlock crushes the current uh, patron war. Patron Warlock. So who do you think is favorite here? Uh, it very much depends how the warrior is built and whether or not it's a demon handlock. I think demon hand handlock is actually worse against control warrior because you have less late game threats. And if the warrior gets enough removal in the early game, you can kind of run out of steam. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Like, I'm, I'm not sure if, if Rick is playing a demon handlock. Uh, I'm not I, sure I, either. I, but, but I suspect so, like, I expect him to do that. And currently, Freaky's got a very bad hand for a handlock. Usually, he's got two more draws, but if he doesn't get a uh, drop to turn, play four, he's very much behind. But at the same token, Gara's hand is kind of looking a bit empty as well. He's got the shield slam, which is really good for dealing with the first we um, first threat. Yeah, well, to be fair, the warrior hand doesn't matter that much as long as the handlock doesn't run away with, like, big threats. Yeah. So it, uh, it's fine. We've seen multiple warriors at this tournament actually run double BGH to counter handlock. RDU did it, and I think, was it Stance Tivo did it as well? Yeah, Stance did it as well, yes. So if Gar has kind of gone for the same idea, this could be a very favorite matchup for him. Like, I would say, like, even with one BGH, two warriors should be slightly favored. And Freak is very sad now. Very it's sad. It's a very low percentage if you mug in your whole hand that you end up without any four drops. It's like it's like ten percent or something. So what do you expect? Do you like tap Sun Fury? I think you have to tap. You have to find those threats, even though you're playing your Sun Fury for literally no value. Well, it might kill some armor, but if it will just turn to a weapon, I guess. Yep. And there it is, one turn, turn too late. late. But one at least you have it for next turn. Exactly. The problem is next turn there will be a developed death death fight already. Most likely. I think death fights the. Uh, actually smart to develop here. I mean, the fire works, more value, you get to armor up. And I wouldn't see the price to make it, see him make that play, because he can then shield slam, slam the turn after. But death fight lets you clear a giant with bash as well on the following turn. So yeah. it depends which line you want to take. I, I guess it works. My might actually be better with the current armor stack. It's taking this time to think about it. He also has the option of coining the Belcher. It protects his armor total as well while developing a minion. Maybe. But you just have a, a good weapon target right now. Yeah, I, I, like, I, li I like this more. So see the giant, and even though he has the mana, he can't tap because he will overdraw next turn. So if he plays the giant this turn, he'll just have to pass. He's yeah. also got the option of playing his Belcher. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Freaky play the Belcher here, because like you expect Warrior by now to have removal for the Giant. Yeah. Yep. Let's take a time to think about it. Yeah, it's interesting, he's got them both Moltens already. Not usually a great card against uh, the Warrior, because they don't burst you down. But it might cause uh, Freaky to play, kind of, not use any of his healing, use his Hellfires, use his taps, and try and push himself into that Molten range very early in the game. Yeah. And force the Warriors to, ha to have answers. I, see, I, I, I like the Belcher here. Like. And then, ow, interesting tech choice. Yeah, we will not see the owl here. I think we, we might just see another Belcher turn. 
If you Belcher, do you attack him with your weapon so you can re-weapon next I, I, I think you want to protect your armor. I think you're right. So you have a few options here. Like, we already see a we see a Ragnaros at Ricky's hand, right? So that, that tells us it's not a it's demon it's lock. It's not, not a demon hand lock, yeah. Exactly. Which is good for him in this matchup. Yeah. So it's like he wants to go for the Mountain Giant. Do you think he'll use the Dark Bomb with it to clear? He can't tap still, right? Yeah, I, th I think you use it. Yeah, you have to. It means you can uh, tap next turn freely. Yeah, but but then we probably see see like a bash armor up shield slam, I guess. Yeah, we'll see bash on the three two armor up shield slam the giant and then weapon into the one two. Yep. You don't develop any board, but you deal with two of your opponent's threats. I just still save the coin. It's fine. Gar is kind of he's got Baron Geddon and Alex Draza, but those are the conditional threats of the warrior, and they're not usually good against handlock. He doesn't. He's not drawn into. The cards he wants to see. He wants his boom and his Usera to play against the handlock and force answers. So, so even though he has the necessary removal, he can't do anything too proactive yet. But, but I guess you're fine with that. Like, yeah. like, I like to You'd play. You'd rather have the removal. Yeah. Yep. Going for the expected turn. Do you think he'll attack with the one two? Like, you're not afraid of Molten's yet, but this, I wouldn't. I this I wouldn't matchup attack here. can go very long. I wouldn't attack here. Never. And he's thinking about it. You can see him hesitating with the arrow. And he does go for the attack. Like, I, I, like, I don't like it before you have to brawl on more removal in your hand. I, I, get, I go for the same. I try not to attack face with Control Warrior until you get that brawl so you can deal with the giant flood. I see a tap, and this this hand is just so dry for Freaky. Only one threat so far. To do just Hellfire this turn. Tip, and so you can giant next turn. The other option is just to both coils. Oh, I guess. Look for a Twilight Drake or a Mountain Giant. Okay. Even boom. But if you don't get it, like. <sighs> All right, this is also. I guess you just slam to get a draw and remove it with that fight. I mean, at some point you'll have to deal with this 4-5. Yeah, I guess so. There's the uh, Dr. Seven. Yeah, One turn too late. I think you used the death fight here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see. What can Freaky do next turn? Like, he, like he can just... Dropping Rag on empty board makes little sense against Control Warrior. Like, yes, you remove the armor, but... Yeah, but one Shield Slam was already used, so like you don't care that much about the armor anymore. Yeah. Like, the least value you have to like hope to get from Rag is like, to kill a Shield Maid, I guess, in this matchup. Or something like that. Yeah, you often want to try and use it for removal. So I was thinking about whether Coin Armor Smith does anything. I'm not sure it does. He's gonna go for it anyway. Mm. I'm not sure why, to be honest. And another Hellfire for Freaky. This hand is just. I can't remember the last time I saw a hand lock draw this poorly. Yeah, it's that's really, really painful to watch. I think he might even just throw the rag down here and hope it kills the armor smith. It's kind of. It's a really sad play, but it's like. <laughs> there is no other play. A really sad play. The thing is, then, then you still don't tap, and you're still at like um, eleven mana on your. On your I think right? your your play last turn, if he had Hellfire, this turn he could have tapped and put down a Molten Giant, yeah, which would have put him in a much better position, in my opinion. Like now you just go rack, like yeah, whatever. And there we go. Like like he knows it's not good, but yes, Ragnaros to kill a two drop. Let's see. It goes uh. face. Gets rid of all the armor, which is nice. Gar does draw into an answer with that bash. But do you really want to play it? No, I think, what about Baron Geddon here? Just yeah, I like Baron Geddon more. Attack, Run and damage get in. You take a lot of damage, but you're getting some armor back. Yeah, he's good with a bash, okay. So, 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 well, he wants to play this slow. I like, like, I cannot blame him. I think it's fine. I, I just like getting Baron Geddon value when you can against Handlock. It's, it's not a great minion. 
but playing it on a uh, what would be an empty board. It might bait out a BGH, which would be used on one of your bigger minions. And another, and how oh, this hand from Freaky. So, so sad. Yeah, I think he's actually considering throwing out the uh, Jiraxis this turn. No, you can't before you play a Molten, so this matchup you lose. Especially not against Death by Death Up. So he's playing the Hellfire. Yeah, I should have used it for before. Now he no, just has a blank turn. So what do you think we'll see from Gar next turn? Will it be the Doctor Boom or will he... I guess the Alex does literally yeah. one damage, so the Boom is better. Yeah, and the thing is you, you, you don't want to deal that one damage. Because it lets him play double giant yeah. Sun yeah, Fury. It's, it's, it's just Boom Unwrap. Yeah, especially with that Execute coming into hand. Like the Boom Bots are a perfect way to proc that Execute. So Fricky is in a really weird position here. You can tap Giant Sun Fury. You run a little bit of a risk of dying to Grom, but uh, it is a clear. And if the Boat Boom Bots hit for over four, which is likely, you can play your other Giant. It might be the winning play. Uh, no, you can't tap, can you? Uh, you're 10 you cards. Can. Right? Yeah, you're 10 cards. I mean, I want to change this. Yeah, if he has 9, 13, so. Looks like I he's going to go for it. I, I, I think it's fine to even play Twilight Drake Molten here at this point. Like, how's the warrior going to deal that damage? Use both bashes. If it does 6 damage to face, though, you get to play yeah. your next threat. Oh, perfect. Okay. perfect, perfect. This is the uh, scenario okay. Freaky wanted. And it's uh, actually a bit awkward for uh, Gara to proc his execute on this giant. He might even not execute this turn. I, I, I think this might be just be a Justy card turn. Just attack face, so you can execute next turn and force your opponent to play defensively and get the value from Jessica. Yeah, I like hmm. the attack face as well. Yeah. It's actually a very difficult for, uh, turn for Gara. He doesn't know what uh, Freaky has. Yeah, Gara looks a little bit stressed as well. Um. Maybe. No. I mean, like, he threatened Leaf, like, you just attack face, drop just take her armor up for six armor. Puts you in an okay spot. Yeah, and you've seen a Dark Bomb in the Hellfire, so the Jessica might actually be problematic. Like, I if, to it deal with. If, if it trades, then you can just burn Geddon to remove the Wolden Giant. Yeah. Wow. with the Baron get in. Okay, that, okay, that says I'll set the leaf if he doesn't have a Taunt next turn. Because he has a 4 attack weapon. Or, or no healing, but yeah, I don't and know. And he does have uh, two ways to deal with Taunts. So this actually, this actually might be a better play. It's a more aggressive play. The I think sure? at this point you... I think you might even direct this, yeah. I mean, trade like Jiraxis? Yeah, trade Jiraxis, then Grom is, one, Grom is one of lethal. It might be the winning play, actually. Yeah. You're right. It's like, when else are you going to play it? You kind of you know you ought to lose to Harrison, but uh, it uh, hasn't I mean been a common card yeah. in this tournament. I mean, like, look, uh, you, have, you have a Sun Fury, and what else do you have in your hand? You have Owls. So, like, you have to Drake. Like, you can even go. You can put up two taunts next time. Yeah, exactly right. So I really, really shield like Maiden. This. Now that Jessica dies to the weapon, which is uh, fine for you, I guess. If, if, you, if you take six to the face. The thing is, Jessica is a long-term value, but it's not long-term value compared to the Jaraxxus hero power. So just going for the tempo of the 5-5, five five I think, is correct. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. And now this Jessica is kind of yeah, just clunky in his hand. Same with the Alex. I mean, ju just imagine you took different enough play with the Justin Carter turn and put the Baron Geddon. Would it still have been a trade? Then you just play Baron Geddon afterwards? You're in a way better spot than now. Yeah, I agree. So it's like he's going to play that, hero power, and taunt up. Yep. He has the option to Dark Bomb and use his weapon to remove this 5-5. Five five. What do you think about that? I like it, to be honest. The other thing is like... You died to uh, double execute Grom. 
It's like the chance he has it is so low, but that's yeah. It's always in your head. I think it's fine to not kill it. I don't like the water here because you haven't seen a brawl yet, and this is this forward is starting to get to the point where you yeah. want to brawl. I don't like it. And there's still a mountain giant in deck, so holding that card in hand offers a discount. Um. So how do you defuse this forward? You have a owl for the drake. You have a potential execute. You have the weapon. It's actually very tricky. It's actually tricky. Hmm. hmm. I'm not quite sure you used the owl this turn. But then what's your play? I don't know. I think the Sylvanas looks very appealing. Yeah. But you haven't seen Al from your opponent. Maybe and handlocks almost always run too, even them. these days. Yes. Like the thing is, what are you going to do? Like, your 5-5 five five is going to hit the 6-6 six six anyway, right? Like, there's yes. no way around it. Yeah, it's a very tricky uh, turn for Gara. I mean, it's the correct turn, actually. No, like, it's, it's, it's all fucked up now. <laughs> because it didn't play the last turn. Gara's in a really, uh, really, really, really bad spot here. You have to do nothing. This is basically saying, okay, I'm planning to draw my brawl now, and that's how I'm going to win. I'm behind, and my brawl is my out. So he has four damage off lethal, right? Or, or, or no, he has off for the watcher. Yeah, he has lethal. Yeah, it's that's exactly, exactly lethal. lethal. Yep. And he counted out very fast. I think he was thinking last turn, how much damage do I have? Yep. And well played by Freaky, especially with his starting hand. His starting yeah, hand yeah. was so, so weak. He said it was so amazingly he Kind of perfectly. Amazingly well played. So, so what do you think uh, is Gara's counter pick? He has. Um, so let's see. Gara's warrior is gone. He has a shaman and a paladin. It will certainly not be the paladin. <laughs> shaman. Shaman's often been considered the counter to hand locking the. And past. he has double doom in my shaman, right? So I. Does he? Yeah, I he was. Okay. I think so. Pick shaman so. for sure then. Yeah, you'll pick shaman for sure. Um, if it's double Doomhammer Shaman, what do you think the win rate is against Handlock? Is it like a 70-30 matchup? Or? Yeah, it's something around that, like 65 to 75, some, somewhere in between. So, like, the way that I see the game been evolving now, it's like the Shaman beating the Handlock. Yeah. And probably the Rogue beating the Shaman. Yeah. If the Rogue loses to Shaman, the Druid will lose to Shaman as well. Yeah. So I can see a, 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 a potential um, pre op Shaman here. Yeah, if, if, if one thing goes... If that one matchup goes Gar away, you should bring the paladin into a the handlock. Secret paladin. Okay. This is interesting. It's possibly switched up what Shamani was playing from last. Uh, yeah, from the last, last group. Last group stage. Okay. Like I can, I can only understand that if, if he runs like divine fears and equalities. Yeah, we don't know what sort of secret paladin he's playing. And Gar and Freaky is playing the slow, um, slow handlock, which is a little bit worse against the. Um, Secret Paladin. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still playing Double Hellfire, right? He's still playing Double Hellfire. That's the key card in this matchup. Oh. We didn't see any BGH or Siphon Souls though, to deal with those challengers. Yeah. This curve from Freaky, once again, if you coin the, the Drake, you don't have a play for next turn, but passing this turn is also weak. Yeah, I like the Drake here. Well, what was the secret that was played? Uh, I can have a look. I think it was Noble Sacrifice. Yes, it was. Okay. So he already has his Doctor Stick, so like he's just weaning down like on his life a bit. Yep, and with two Creepers up, he's very safe to, uh, to help Hellfire. To, yeah, to uh, basically any AoE removal. And there's the AoE removal. That Watcher was a nice draw. It just gives him something to do. It doesn't get any immediate value, but at some point it's going to get taunted up or shadow flamed. Yep. Gives him a way to spend that two mana. So he's thinking about attacking, but attacking can only lead to bad things. <laughs> there's a noble <laughs> sacrifice avenge. Yeah. Which there is. Like, I, like I think just sit here. Just the, sit. The, the problem is that he doesn't have a taunt giver yet. That was his problem so far. Yes. Like I think if he attacks this turn, and he could attack a creeper next turn, shadow flame, and he removes more of the board. He takes more damage. Yeah, I like I like it here like this. Okay. Okay. Now Gara has issue with having too much too much stuff on board. It's like all he has is tokens everywhere. Tokens. <laughs> all the tokens. Do you even trade into the Drake here, and then then remuster hero power? I think that might be the play. I, th I think you can. 
Like you don't want to drop him too low too quickly, I feel. You have to break both uh spider so which makes you really vulnerable to hellfire. But hellfire in turn five, it's not as I think this is fine. I mean if the Drake attacks it dies to the noble sacrifice, right? Yeah. Leave it on two. Yeah, I think I like it. It telegraphs one of your secrets, but you've always suspected yeah. noble sacrifice. Now you have to decide between the Shadow Flame and the uh the Belcher. Oh, this, this is a hard turn for Freaky. Like no, there's no Capez Spirit, which is good news. But like, I think you have to sit here. If you attack, you just, you're just buffing your opponent's minions. You don't want to do that. Well, you could attack and Shadow Flame. Mm. This is really smart now, because Mysterious Challenger value is so low with two secrets already up, so you don't want to play it until your opponent procs the secret. I think you still play it. Okay, he doesn't go for it. Okay. So he's putting on a 1-1 one, one to reduce the owl value. Yeah, he leaves the, the creepers at 1 HP. I like it. And then and, and I think you, you, you still leave the drake alive, right? Yeah, because you want him to proc the secret at this point. Yes. Now now he's deciding, can he afford to play around Molten Giants? Like, I think you might just go all in. Like, he's already got st stuff to taunt up, and it feels like you're behind. I mean, he puts him to 15. It, it doesn't matter with Molten's. Yeah, you're right. Not this turn, at least. Like, the two turns after. So turn six, Freaky has quite a few options. He could break a spider and hellfire because the noble sacrifice won't trigger right now with a full board. Um, I think throwing down the emperor or the giant is a bit too greedy. No, I think I, I, I think you have to kill a spider and then shadow flame. You are I, I would even from the drake at this point. Yeah, it's got one hit point. It's much worse than a uh, watcher. Yeah. Your opponent will get. Uh, Let's see what Avenge lands on. It doesn't matter. It gets Shadow Flamed away. Yep. This will mean that the uh, Mysterious Challenger can get full value. The, on the, 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 the only question is do you tap or do, do you not tap? Uh, if you don't get full, the, if you not get the second value. You don't have uh, a Taunt Giver or a Giant yet. I, I think you have to tap here. Right? Like. Okay, he opts not to tap. I think that's fine. Now you really have to think about going face. Like yeah, now it's a can this this is this is the funny part now. Oh, he doesn't go face. I like it. And there's the molten. So correct choice. No, if it's, it, it doesn't matter if he draws the molten. It's always the correct choice. <laughs> like I think. So with the full Christmas tree, you know that the first minion you play will be put to one health. Yes. And you've got a bunch of giants in your hand, so <laughs> one has to bite the dust, I guess. Do you just throw out the tap and throw out the belcher this turn? You take seven damage to face with that play. Uh, more. On board. More. Because the creepers will, will be two. Right. Yep. So you will take nine damage to face. So you'll put, put two, four. So a blessing of kings could be it if you just place a belcher tap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really t hard turn for Freaky. It looked really, really good for him at the start, but uh, I mean the power of the mysterious challenger. I, th I think your best play might be to tap for a for taunt giver and just taunt the watchers. Might have been the way to go. So this is a very interesting play. He basically went for the highest value play he could. And he's very, very close to dying with this play. Can you remove the Boomba from the face? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so... So uh, you divine favor for true silver champion, right? Go all face. True Silver and Blessing of Kings is lethal. It's you lethal, get quite uh, a few yeah. draws. So I think that's the play, absolutely. Yeah, I think you do my like favor first. You open that, yes. Shredder, no. Because Creation's just short. And there's the Kings. Yep, there's the Kings of Lethal. And so we have a tie. A tie. Whew. Secret power then. We've seen it banned a lot this tournament so far, but. Uh, yeah, Freaky decide that his lineup can deal with it, and uh, yeah, now he, he has to show that. He has to show it. He does have the rogue. How's the rogue against secret paladin? <laughs> I know you're not a rogue player yourself. No, I'm not. Like I'm not the rogue you're expert. Played class by a lot. Um, but I feel like it's not that great. Like it's not, it's not super far behind, but it's also not super and great. And opting for the rogue is the counter yeah, deck. I mean, obvious. the other deck is the druid, and secret paladin's kind of considered the hard counter to druid. Yeah. So. 
Let's see. He has an Assassin's Blade. Not so he's not teched for this matchup. No, the Assassin's Blade is just way too slow in this matchup usually. And he mysterious challenger capped by Gara. He's got a pretty expensive hand, but the challenger and the boom are minions Rogue hates dealing with. So if uh, Fricky's gonna win, he's gonna have to have quite a fast start. Mm. He has got a pretty reasonable hand. He's got prep sprint. He has the SI. Like I, I feel it's a secret pattern. You, you don't like. Um, you don't rely that much on your early minions, but you're yeah, they're just there to you know. Yeah, yeah. To, be there. To, to keep him busy a little bit. Like, like you don't you don't expect them to actually live. Like, <laughs> just keep the rogue busy, and then you, from turn four, you predator, belcher, challenger, six, seven, win the game. eight, win the game, play, games. All right, so Gara immediately throws down his cog hammer. He sees the value it can get. Yep. I think the earlier you play it, you get uh, the better. Yep. The th two three weapon keeps your head on board. So Shredder over the teacher. There's nothing for him to prep. He wants to potentially get a swing turn. They're like Violet teacher, prep, zap. And I mean, like, we'll probably see like a, a knife juggler, secret keeper, sacrifice here. It definitely looks like the play. Yeah. What order do you go? Do you attack in, knife juggler, attack in? I think you leave the spider as it is. You wouldn't uh, break it onto the Shredder and try and kill it with the knife? No. Like, like I, w I, w I would probably play the knife struggler and secret keeper first. See what happens. If it hits, use the weapon. Yes. Yeah, I like that line of play. Let if it doesn't, just like. Just leave it up. Yep. I'll never tell. He opts for the redemption instead of. Okay, yeah, I the I redemption on the creeper, especially with the knife juggler out. It's great value. Yeah, but, I, but, I, but I think if you hit the redemption, you hit the shredder here. Okay. Holds on to the weapon. Okay. Surprising. So you focus more on the rogue perspective as you are the premier rogue, rogue player. player here. He can do a. F if he really wants to be aggressive, he can pr uh, prep out the uh, the oil, attack in, blade flurry, mm -hmm. kind of go for a board clear and put seven damage to the face. Assuming it's not a noble sacrifice, he doesn't know what secret it is. Okay, yeah. I, li I like that. And it's a very aggressive line of play. You could just play the Age of Drake, but you're not clearing anything. Wow, all of those knives. All of those knives. <laughs> you're going to Age of Drake, attack the Secret Keeper, and prep it the Blade Flare? I think so. I think he's going to do that, yes. Or do you attack the creeper? Or the secret I keeper? I think the secret keeper is more threatening. Yeah, I think so as well. It's the same amount of damage on board, but it can't grow. So I mean you can't rate. leave that board up to start, right? You can't, right? Oh. He he can. He can just say, you trade away, and next turn I go for a huge blade flurry. But you take so much damage. But like the spell power you really, really want to clear is the Paladin. Yeah, you want to clear it. But we will see a, a Doctor Six for sure here. Um, so you start with Coin Doctor Six. Yes. Then you probably... Like, you will use your weapon this turn for sure as well. Yeah. Do you trade away the Creeper this turn? No. I think I you try and keep it alive. Yeah, I think it's as well. So the knife misses. I think you trade away your Keeper this turn. Yeah. <laughs> Weapon into the 3-2, then Keeper and the 1-1s into the Drake, and keep the Juggler. No, I, I, I think I, w I, w I would just have to keep it to the 4-4. To the four four. Yeah. Just to get, like, maximum chances to actually kill everything. Oh, okay. so I just kill the Knife Juggler over the Keeper. I guess that's also fine. It protects a little bit more against, like, a huge Blade Flurry. Uh, not really. Like, a huge Blade Flurry deals with you either way. So you can uh, clear the boards except for two tokens here. You oil, you attack, then you eviscerate the 6-6, six six, and then you flurry. And you just don't want the Avenge to go on the k Secret Keeper, basically. Oh, yeah. And you're in a good spot. Yes. Not a good spot, because we have Boom and yeah, Tyrion coming up. Yeah, so but, but we have a dead turn next turn. So it depends how much uh, freaking good is dead turn. He does have the uh, Edwin Van Cleef, but he's going to have with a prep, so that's a good target for the uh, Avenge.
but yeah, it's called use of prep abyss, right? So we have, uh, we have a repentance spirit up, right? I'll have a look. Repentance, okay. better spirit. Okay. So there'll be two two tur two two twos at the end of this turn. Yeah, that's pretty decent. I mean, like, let's see if he, if he has uh, something to play, like Shredder. Or Knife Shredder? I mean, that knife works. Is reasonable. That works. You just seen his uh, board clear, just flooding yeah, the board. He, he just flurried, so hey, here, here we come. Ready for action. <laughs> and now with the boom next turn, I think oh, the rogue is done. The Assassin's Blade. Just like, he's just got his slow cards in hand. There's no synergies left. I think the sprint is the correct call if you're an experienced rogue player, because you can get a weapon and a blade flurry, and that's how you kind of get back in the game. Yeah, I think this is, this is his only out. Like, the backstab will give him some time. But now we just see the uh, the ultimate yeah. curve. Th that's the ultimate curve. Like, it's the, the Challenger, the curve boom, Tyrion. Like, each minion, such incredibly high value. Yeah, so like, it's, this is just, like, no way. And they prep... No, there's no, no way. There's, there's no, no way. out. Rip. So now you're gonna, you're forced to play your druid into its hard counter matchup. No, into its hard, in, in, into your hard counter matchups because if yes. he if he beats the fellow, then he has to play a shaman. Oh wow, this <laughs> is such a bad spot for freaky. Yeah, it's such a bad spot. Like it's the worst spot you. I have. wonder how he didn't ban the paladin. So what was he expecting to? Uh, to use as his counter to a secret paladin. Like all of his decks seem to be match up poorly with it. Like Yeah, I don't understand like I'm maybe he expected it to be a mid range paladin. And then the rogue is a, a favored deck. Yeah, then the rogue is, is highly favored, yeah. But 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 like I mean like of course Gara could could change his decks, right? But Yeah. Already we see a pretty good uh good hand from Gara. He's got the challenger, he's got the muster. And no ramps, no uh innervates for Freaky. I, I think in this matchup, like the early game is way more important than against the rogue, for example. Uh, I think that's definitely true. I'm still, I'm always tempted to keep the challenger. Yeah. No matter what the matchup, it's just, just having it wins you games. And it keeps the cog hammer as well. Usually, when I keep the muster, I don't keep the cog hammer. What do you think about this? Yeah, like keeping both is kind of awkward and seems anti. If you have the coin, it makes a bit more sense. But now here we go. He's got no two drop and three three drops. Yeah, like the curve is pretty awkward. I mean, yeah, he, he has the blessing to follow up the master. Yeah. It's unlikely we'll see a coin swipe if, if he does muster. Oh, like first time we've seen a true silver. So he's got. He must have the one-one split between the cog hammer and the true silver. Oh, I like the I like the one-one split. Like the question here is just like, he's such a like. Do you go for a true server or do we go for a blessing? I think you go for a true server here for sure. Let's see what this top deck is, mini bot. Yeah, true silver looks good. Yeah, you hate to play over like a three charge weapon, but I mean, I mean it doesn't matter. You, you have could so many weapon charges now. You, you could also mini bot hero power, but I don't like that. No. The thing is, if you true silver into it, are you then going to trade your one ones? No, okay, so what, what do you think about running your weapon? And two one ones into the shredder, but blood blessing of kings. Your other guy kill whatever comes out. You have to you have to you have to board your initiative. Next turn, you you can choose to sh uh, master a mini bot again. We fill the board. I actually yeah. like that play. It's very difficult to spot because uh, the blessing of kings seems like it's immediately bad because we trade in. It's on one hit point, so it dies to a swipe. Yeah, or like a rat. Like because you have a great follow up. Like you have mini bot Belcher next turn into, yeah. into into Doctor Six. Like it's perfectly lined out. Like blessing it. isn't immediately obvious though, because if you just blessing and go face, keeper is such a hard counter. And Gar is really taking his time with this turn. He's going for the weapon, not the yeah, I don't blame player. him. But I think the other play was just better. It depends what comes out. Three two, okay. better than a two three for Gara. I mean, no, it's you're kind of in the same position as the other play. We get the wild growth turn four. I think you, st I think you have to play it, and um, with your hero power. Yeah, of course you do. Like you don't develop a minion, which is. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like, Gara or um, Freaky or he has to be GH in his hand, right? So he wants the board clear when his opponent plays the challenger, so you can hero power phase, and then to be GH for sure, the yep. the challenger. 
Druid sure. is one of the few classes which gets that option. They have the hero power and they have the BGH. Yeah. And it actually deals with every single secret because the competitive spirit will go off on the 2 1, which got redemption, which then trades with the BGH. Yeah. It deals with the repentance, deals yeah. with the avenge, everything. It's like, it's like the perfect answer to it. It's now, now with the mini bot. I, wouldn't li I don't like playing the Noble Sacrifice here because there's, there's a reasonable chance he doesn't proc it and then your mysterious challenger won't play it from your deck. Yeah. The thing now is, because you didn't hear Paul last turn, the challenger gets so strong because like it's, it, it's, a one, w it's a one in four, basically, that you can do the good play. He's got the minions down on curve. I mean, you can choose as Druid also to, to play this game more aggressively. Like, saying, I am the beat and I will just kill you before you can do all your fancy stuff. Yeah, definitely. But you didn't get the uh, aggressive start you need. You need the innovates when you do that. Yeah. Or at least the uh, coin wild growth into a perfect curve. Like an innovate boom and then just go straight, yep. So. So it would shock me if we didn't see a challenger. Yeah, got his play. He knows this play. Yep, he knows. Turn six, challenger. Don't need to think. And the thing is now, I uh, think now for, for Freaky, because you play this minion, it's only one and three that you can Instead of a 50-50. Like, now you're in such an awkward spot because now... Yeah, well, I guess you could keep her afterwards, right? Like, like, like you just... Actually, you have two good targets. Like, you hero power his face. I, if the Avenge hits the minibot, you, you silence. If it hits the challenger, you BGH. So, yeah, but it seems like he's going for that play. You really, really want to land on the challenger, though. Like, the BGH swing is so much better than yeah, the super one. Yeah, of course. One. But it's better than if it, if it hits the 1 1, you'll be basically done. <laughs> Let's see. There's and no good trades. we go for the silence. All right. So, the middle of the road. Um, the score at the moment is um, 2 1 for Gara. Yeah. But still, you're so behind on board at the moment. Just think about it, he's got to kill the... Yeah. Two, two, yeah. But another spirit comes off. You do get a... Uh, Look, you can, you can, next you turn, can, you, you just take the damage. Oh, this is an interesting choice now. I, th I think the great place for Knife Juggler Love Up. I uh, think you uh, uh, trade the 2-2 two, two yeah, first and Knife Juggler Love Up. Yes. Like you 2-2 two, two into, the into the shade and then you Knife Juggler Love Up go face. Is like there any uh, benefit to Blessing of Kings like Cog Hammer and just do maximum base damage this turn? Like, how much no, damage can no, you I do? No, I think the Love is just a block. Like, you win the just game. Just block, yeah. You win the game. Like. Yeah, there's no way they can remove your board. He's going for your play. Knife yeah. Juggler, then a Love Up. And this is a checkmate play. Knife if he hits, hits, it's like, it's like yeah. a complete checkmate. Yeah, there's no card in the game which really kind of gets you out of this. And no, in, no, uh, just Freaky's mine. He's kind of yeah. he's safe, but uh, yeah. we know Gara's got a weapon and the kings. 